Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. General Hospital spoilers for the next two weeks, March 18 to March 29, predict that Diane Miller will once again show confidence in her abilities to overturn the disbarment verdict and get Alexis Davis back to practice law. During the week of March 18 to 22, Alexis may try not to get her hopes up, but the prospect of getting back to becoming an attorney will be incredibly enticing. Once Alexis tells Molly Lansing Davis on the scenario, Molly may argue her mom should trust Diane and go for it. Over with Marshall Ashford, he'll chew over the circumstances of his misdiagnosis and try to wrap his head around the harshness of it all. Dr. Paul Braddock targeted Marshall and other poor black guys who were young and battling with anger issues. Kevin Collins will continue to shed light on the matter, so Curtis Ashford and Stella Henry will offer assistance. Meanwhile, Jocelyn Jax will dump Dex Heller after his confession about almost carrying out a hit on Cyrus Renault for Sonny Corinthos. That'll impact Jocelyn's perception of Dex and be the last sunny straw as far as she's concerned. In the aftermath, watch for Jocelyn to lean on Carly Spencer as well as Trina Robinson. Dex will also find a confidant when he opens up to Anna Devane, though they'll probably leave out the bit about almost taking down Cyrus considering she's the police commissioner. As for Sonny, he'll have a sweet meeting with Tracy Quartermain at the hospital. Sonny will also meet paths with Natalia Ramirez at some point and give her some helpful advice. It may be a circumstance where Sonny asks Natalia to become more accepting of her daughter's sexuality without recognizing his own daughter is involved here. Natalia will confront a surprising revelation soon after, so she might notice Sonny chatting with Christina and realize Blaze's girlfriend has a crime boss father. It looks like Jason Morgan will still be at the boathouse when he has a surprise guest, so will it be someone from the adjacent Quartermain mansion? Could Danny Morgan bring Jake Weber for a father-son reunion instead? Over with John Cates, he'll make a new adversary out of Brooke Lynn Quartermain and face her fury. Brooke Lynn and Harrison Chase will confront a stunner later, so it may involve where Jason Morgan has been hidden. Anna will make a confession to John as they toss back a couple drinks, but he seems ready to stay tight-lipped about his own link to Jason and the blackmail. Across town, Drew Kane will offer a proposal for Nina Corinthos to consider. Could that lead to a compromise that would put Nina back in her old role at Crimson? Now that the writing transition is completely underway, the show might back off Drew's over-the-top resentment and let him be sensible for once. Other GH teasers claim a deception photoshoot will take a terrible turn. There may be some kind of calamity that prompts Sasha Gilmore to reconsider working with Cody Bell, since she'll make a crucial choice later. Cody will also console Olivia Quartermain of a Dante Falconery's extended comatose state, so she'll console him in return. Elsewhere, Willow Corinthos will be upset by something she's done. That might suggest Willow will obsess over the legal repercussions of the Jason disaster she's wrapped up in. Then again, Willow might accidentally tip someone up and fear Jason's going to get arrested. Regardless, Jason will indeed be brought into police custody soon, so he'll call Diane and plead for help. It could leave Diane torn since Sonny may not approve, but Carly will be fine for it. During the week of March 25 to 29, there'll be more Jason developments to keep fans tuned in. Will Sonny confront Jason in the interrogation chamber and demand some answers? What about Sam McCall? Of course, all eyes will be on Dant, and if he's going to wake up, let's just hope it happens quickly and that he can remember what happened to clear Jason's name. There's also the problem of Jason's participation with the rooftop sniper, so remain with us for predictions on how he'll slither out of his current legal dilemma. Jason will know a lot is on the line as he's got a mission to fulfill and can't live with the consequences if he can't pull it off. At some point, John will inevitably talk to Jason in detention and perhaps deliver some new orders. General hospital spoilers indicate the next two weeks will bring some starting moments, 
so stay tuned for all the exciting news coming. At home, Carly looks at the stories on her phone about Jason and the manhunt for him. There comes a knock at the door and it is Drew. She says he didn't have to knock, but he didn't want to disturb in case his brother was here. She insists he's not here, but Drew suspects he was last night and she confirms it. Drew comes in and he knew Jason would come to her. He asks whether when she arrived to help him last night at the mansion if Jason was already here. She says he wasn't, and he's delighted she did, lied to him last night, but she also didn't call him. Carly says the only person she called was Deanne because of Anna's search warrant. She reveals what transpired, including that Jason did, even though Bobby died. Drew asks if he told her about how he got shot. Carly says they didn't talk about it. Drew notes the cops suspect he shot Dante, but Carly knows Jason and knows he didn't shoot Dante. Drew says, that's what I thought you would say. Drew says the police report that Dante was pursuing two suspects, and Carly is confident the other man shot Dante. Drew wonders why she won't consider Jason could have shot Dante, even if by mistake. She wonders why Hess confident Jason is guilty. He swears Hess not, but all she has is how she feels about him, and they've always come first with each other and always will. It's always been Jason and Carly. Carly says Jason is her friend, but that's not true, she doesn't. No, if there is a word to define how she feels about Jason. She claims that doesn't change how she feels about Drew. Drew knows she loves him, and she loved Jackson and Sonny too, but none of them can take Jason's place in her life or her heart. He says Jason is the one she looks to, counts on, and who keeps her secrets. Carly laments that Jason's never failed her. Drew says what about the last two years letting her think he was dead, isn't that failing her? Jason wakes up at the Quartermain boathouse, and his wound is still bloody. He struggles with pain to get up. Danny goes in and is astonished to see his dad. He turns to leave, but Jason asks him to remain. He is in difficulty and needs his help. Danny yells, Why should I help you? Jason swears on Danny's life that he didn't shoot Dante. Danny asks what he can do to help, and Jason instructs him to grab a first aid box from the house. Danny leaves to grab it, and Jason instructs him to latch the door behind him. Jason pulls out a gun and sets it next to him. Danny returns with the gear, and Jason smiles at his son. Jason guesses he thought about calling the cops. Danny confesses he did, but didn't because he said he didn't do it. Danny sees the gun next to Jason and panics, but Jason claims the safety is on. Jason opens the kit and asks him not to tell his mother that he saw him or where he is. Danny asks why not. Jason can't explain anything and needs him to trust him. Danny tells him okay. On the next general hospital, Drew refuses to ride things out to the very conclusion with Carly. At the Savoy, Selena fumes they, both been duped. Also at the Savoy, Curtis has news to share with his dad. Danny goes to someone to beg a favor. Sam shouts that she will never forgive him. Anna asks Sonny not to go after Jason. Jason tells Michael it was. Fair of him to draw him into this. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please click like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.